Good evening. If you all can start to take your seats, there's a few up here on the second row, and it uh, looks like there's a few in between. There will also be overflow in the lobby. It will be on the television screens out there. How's the volume? The volume good? Hmm? The volume was the volume good? No, nah, give me a little up a little bit. Really? Well, I don't know, because I'm, I'm close to you. I can't tell you. At this time, I ask those that are able to, to please stand for the posting of the colors. Thank you. You may be seated. First and foremost, I want to welcome everyone to the Durham Police Department's Annual Service Award Ceremony. My name is Captain Mary Ann Bond, and I am joined here by Lieutenant J.L. Jackson. Tonight, we are here to recognize citizens, civilians, and Durham police officers for their extraordinary efforts and dedication to the city of Durham. Their efforts and contributions to our community help strengthen the bond between law enforcement and the citizens of Durham. Those we are honoring tonight were nominated by peers, supervisors, and community members. At this time, I would like to acknowledge any special guests, and I ask that you please stand. Any federal elected officials, any state elected officials, county elected officials, city elected officials, city and county department heads, all law enforcement, the executive command staff, and also welcome Boy Scout Troop Pack 137 from St. Joseph AME Church in Durham. These young scouts are working toward their citizenship requirement and are in attendance to learn more about the important role citizens play in the keeping the community safe. Thank you all for attending. I'd like to mention one final item before we get started, and that's tonight's ceremony is being broadcast live on the Durham Television Network. The program will be rebroadcast several over the next several months and made available online for on-demand viewing. At this time, I invite Chaplain Phil Wiggins to the podium for the invocation. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening thanking you for the many blessings, such as friendships, our professions, in which we have been called to serve the talents and skills given to each of us. Today we come to recognize and honor those that have gone beyond what is required in the services to their organization and to the community. With this special recognition comes added responsibility to those being honored. It will now be their role as they are awarded for their work and leadership skills to demonstrate humility in that there are so many others as deserving. 
and now they have the task to lift up those around them to a higher level of awareness, motivation, and commitment to perform well and go the extra mile, and to help others climb the ladder of success with patience, trust, and respect. We thank you for those being recognized tonight that their work and accomplishments may continue leading them towards excellence in all they do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I now invite Durham Police Chief Jose L. Lopez to the podium for remarks and for a special presentation of an award. Thank you, Captain Bond. First of all, I'd like to recognize someone who uh, is not an elected official, but is an individual that I work for, uh, Mr. Tom Bonfield, uh, for his attendance here. Uh, I think it's important to note that because of the support that the city manager's office gives to the uh, city police department and I wish to publicly thank you. I've been given a very difficult task here today. I've been asked to be brief, and that's gonna be a, a, a bit hard. Uh, today's ceremony, uh, recognizing our uh, police officers and also recognizing members of our community uh, for the efforts, the work uh, that they've done during the year is an extremely important uh, situation and important time. Uh, in today's law enforcement times, it's very important that the message be sent out that both the community and this police department work together, especially here in the city of Durham, that that's the way that we do it here, that it is one family, uh, one family being the city, both citizens and both police officers. And I think it's very important that we recognize how we work together, what we do together, and uh, appreciate ourselves even more for that. Uh, we deal with a lot of companies here in the city of Durham, uh, as far as working for the, with the police department. And one company that we deal with is uh, Down Home uh, Harley-Davidson. And uh, they work with our uh, motorcycle squad. Our motorcycle unit is one of the heaviest accolade units that we have. They do an excellent job and their service is asked all over the, uh, uh, the, the state and also uh, in D.C. during the memorial. They are called upon to serve there also. But we have someone from, uh, uh, the, from the Harley-Davidson Center who really has gone out of their way to, uh, to service that unit and to make sure that that unit continues moving. Of course, we do pay the vendor for the work they do, but this individual has just stuck out uh, to help us in keeping that, uh, that unit going at a moment's notice uh, to the extent that I came to realize that he really needs to be recognized by this police department. And I'd like to call up uh, Will Hoyle. <laughs> Will makes it seem like our motorcycles never break down. It always makes it seem like they have the best equipment. And I wonder sometimes how we can afford that equipment, but I think a lot of it has to do with the recommendations that are given. Uh, above and beyond. So I want to take this moment to present with appreciation to Will Hoyle for your outstanding service and dedication to the Durham Police Department this plaque. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now there are a lot of individuals who are going to be recognizing so I'm certain that many of you are going to be disappointed that I'm going to stop speaking and, uh, and move on with the program. Thank you. Good evening. The first awards for this evening will be the Community Service Medals. The Community Service Medals honor DPD police officers, non-sworn DPD employees, and members of the general public for service to the community above and beyond the call of duty. The first award is awarded to a group of individuals that make up the City of Durham's Neighborhood Improvement Services Community Engagement Team. Linwood Best, Nicholas Allen, Robin Dixon, Laura Beidiger, Pamela Pagan, and Winota Stature.
By its departmental mission, the NIS Community Engagement Team is responsible for providing outreach and education to Durham residents and community organizations to eradicate blight, enhance neighborhood vitalization, ensure safer neighborhoods, and to encourage an active participation in neighborhood redevelopment and public policy and decision-making dialogue. But in an extraordinary demonstration of the city's culture of service philosophy, NIS community engagement staff have essentially operated as a voluntary ad hoc committee supporting DPD's annual national night out observances. Their support and action greatly contribute to the DPD's national night out coordinators management and implementation of the observances many facets. In 2014, with record numbers of registrations, the NIS teams behind the scenes involvement was instrumental to another successful year. Community, community engagement team members, Linwood Best, Nicholas Allen, Robin Dixon, Laura Beidiger, Pamela Pagan, and Winona Satcher demonstrated above and beyond teamwork and customer service to, to DPD and the community. These team members have been vital partners in our successful National Night Out observances. Daryl Hedgepath. Daryl Hedgepath manages Neighborhood Improvement Services Impact Team that is known as the department's, the department's rapid responders. Their mission is to remedy non-compliant housing properties, abate public nuisances such as litter, graffiti, illegal dumping, and abandoned shopping carts, and conduct neighborhood service project, projects. Although law enforcement slash public safety is not the, the team's core mission, Daryl's actions and can-do cheerful attitude have helped to facilitate pedestrian and, and motorist safety as part of National Night Out's neighborhood events over the years. Specifically, with the support of NIS administration, Daryl voluntarily manages delivery of barricade street closures relative to registered National Night Out events. While barricade delivery may seem fairly simple, and perhaps mundane, the service is actually quite time consuming, and more importantly, absolutely essential to National Night Out operations. What makes the responsibility more challenging is the changes in registrations, locations, and, and add-on registrations often create last minute barricade logistical issues. This seamless service is provided across three city departments, mainly because of Darrell's enthusiasm, professionalism, responsiveness, and resourcefulness. Furthermore, the National Night Out Barricade Service to date has been provided free of charge to communities because Daryl Hedgepath makes it happen behind the scenes and always with a big welcoming smile. Helen Chick Hinton and Pat Ellis, <coughs> excuse me, Durham Crime Stoppers. <coughs> Helen Chick Hinton and Pat Ellis are both dedicated, long serving members of the Durham Crime Stoppers Board. Chick Hinton has been a Durham Crime Stoppers Board member for approximately 20 years and is the longest serving member on the board. In the time she has been a board member, she has served as secretary and as backup secretary. Chick can always be counted on to attend community events to represent Crime Stoppers and frequently pr participates in Project Safe Neighborhood community responses. Her late husband, Billy Hinton, also served on the board of directors for 17 years. Chick has been active with District 2 Partners Against Crime and has attended Durham Police Department Citizens Police Academies four times. She has gone on police ride-alongs to learn more about how Crime Stoppers helps to, helps to combat crime, and she frequently communicates with the coordinator about upcoming functions. In addition to her Crime Stopper responsibility, Chick also assists with, assist with preparing promotional bags for communities participating in National Night Out. She has a wonderful personality, and people enjoy working with her. 
She has, she has dedicated a significant amount of time to helping law enforcement fight crime in our community. Chick Hinton is an exceptional community member and partner to the Durham Police Department. <laughs> Pat Ellis has been a member of the Durham Crime Stoppers for 16 years. During this time, he has been a board member and has served as a, chair, as a chairman of the board for approximately 10 years. Part of his role as the chair is to attend Crime Stoppers meetings, guide policy, attend events, and promote the program. He is constantly recruiting new board members and has been, has been successful in creating a diverse board of directors. In his duties as chairman, Pat, act, Pat acts as a liaison between the police department, coordinator, and the Crime Stoppers program. He is always accessible to coordinators, the community, and other board members. He comes up with new ideas and is highly supportive of new ways to promote the program. Pat has participated in 20 community responses and neighborhood canvases in partnership with, partner, with Project Safe Neighborhoods. He goes, to data, he goes to the data bus station and helps to educate community members about Crime Stoppers and attends community events to support Crime Stoppers, such as the Target Public Safety Day. Pat has also attended numerous Crime Stoppers conferences to learn about new ideas and other programs and to network with fellow programs. In October 2014, under his leadership, Durham Crime Stoppers was awarded the 2014 Productivity Award by the North Carolina Crime Stoppers Association. He has done all this while still working full time as a real estate agent and being active in his church. Pat Ellis is an exceptional community member and partner to the Durham Police Department who helps enhance the quality of life in Durham. <laughs> Nana Asante. Nana Asante, a sexual assault advocate for the Durham Crime Crisis Response Center, has been a true asset and partner to the Durham Police Department in her work with the Start By Believing campaign. This campaign, which was launched in January 2015, is a result of hard work by Nana Asante, Durham Police, Dep Durham Police Investigator Quincy Tate, and the Durham Police Department's Spe Special Victims Unit. The campaign focuses focus is to change the response to sexual assaults and rapes within our community by providing survivors with a supportive response. We believe this campaign will make a substantial difference in changing attitudes towards sexual assaults, enhancing our resources, and building positive partnerships with other agencies. Nana Asante and Investigator Tate spent their Saturdays and Sundays in February, in February providing additional training to officers about how to respond to sexual assault calls. The, su the success of this campaign would not have been possible without Nana Asante's support and assistance. Her hard work and dedication is making a positive difference in our community. <laughs> Hazeline Umstead. Hazeline Umstead has been an active and passionate member of PAC-3 for many years and currently serves on its executive committee as elected member at large. As a leader of, of Lyme Park and PAC-3, she inspires and motivates people to get involved by not just her words, but by her actions. Every year she participates in the citywide National Night Out observance by providing and hosting a huge feast. Not only does she invite her neighbors, but she invites all of the District 3 police officers, all of the PAC members, and even elected officials. Ms. Hazeline is famous for her cooking and is reputed to have the best National Night Out food in the whole city. <laughs> her dedication to National Night Out was demonstrated in 2014. She was reaching for a dish while preparing her National Night Out feast and fell, severely injuring herself. 
but she continued cooking, chopping, and preparing the various dishes she wanted to serve the next evening. She was found by a friend the following morning who insisted on calling an ambulance. Ms. Hazeline's only concern was for National Night Out and the officers and officials who would be disappointed by the cancellation of her event. Hazeline Umstead has served District 3 and her community above and beyond the normal call of duty. Through her dedication, commitment, and hard work, she has made Lyon Park a much better place, a much safer place to live, work, and play. Pastor Dan Johnson. Dan Johnson, pastor of Mosaic Church, has worked closely with the Durham Police Department and the community to provide comfort and assistance to friends and families of victims of violent crimes. He has provided a free burial to a homicide victim and ongoing encouragement to his family. After a homicide at an apartment complex, Pastor Johnson organized a family fun day in the parking lot. Pastor Johnson, in conjunction with Mosaic Church, brought in blow-up games, cotton candy, and face painting for the families. More than 250 kids came outside and participated as the community began the healing process. When a nine-year-old died due to an accidental gunshot, Pastor Johnson responded by visiting the family. He networked with other churches and organizations to provide counsel, food, and financial support for the burial of the young boy. Pastor Johnson also serves as a member of the Emergency Chaplains Program, which provides assistance to local public safety employees as well as community members. In addition, he developed a program to honor local law enforcement. Pastor Johnson has quietly and unassumingly made a positive difference in the lives of many Durham residents through his faith and outreach. Alice Cheek. Alice Cheek is a PAC-5 co-facilitator and a leader in the Edgemont Elms community. She believes that keeping the community safe and thriving involves people who live in the community as well as the police. She always says, the police can't fight crime by themselves. It takes all of us working together. As District 5's co-facilitator, she works continuously to keep the lines of communication open between the, communi between the community and the police department. Alice is a lady of few words, but her work in the community speaks volumes. She has extraordinary communi community planning skills, but collaboration is her strong suit. She is efficient, tactful, and somehow manages to leave everyone smiling at the end of a call. Her energy and smiles are contagious. As a community leader, Alice coordinated and assisted with community events such as National Night Out, Bull City Play Streets, Build a Better Block, Build a Better Block Thanksgiving in Spring, Canned Food Drives, and Backpack Drives. In the summer, Alice volunteers her time at Refiners Fire Community Church as a mentor providing encouragement and words of wisdom to area youth. She also initiated a bike safety campaign providing residents with bike reflectors and reflective handbands. Alice Sheik is an excellent community leader and a wonderful asset to our city. <laughs> Christina Fountain. Christina Fountain has a strong commitment and to, excuse me, Christina Fountain has a strong commitment to increasing the personal safety of law enforcement officers and their families. She was watching the news in December 2014 when she saw a local story about a Durham police officer being shot at while in his patrol car, and she knew that she had to do something to enhance officer safety. She started to do research and learned that in some states, like Florida, the home addresses for officers are not published for the general public to see. Christina decided she wanted to do something 
she wanted to do what she could do to make this become law in North Carolina. She made a call to the Durham County Tax Office and North Carolina Attorney General's Office and met with Chief Lopez to find out how this could be done. She made a presentation to the Durham City Council about the importance of protecting the home addresses of officers. After this presentation, she met with delega delegates from the North Carolina State House and Senate, as well as with the city manager and county manager and the Durham County Commissioners, and it was agreed that a bill would be presented. Christina Fountain saw a need and put in time and effort to support law enforcement officers and to attempt to make their lives safer. She has truly made a positive difference. <laughs> Chaplain Ralph Thompson. Chaplain Ralph Thompson, Director of Emergency Chaplains, has been an in invaluable partner to Durham's public safety agencies and the Durham community. Chaplain Thompson formed Emergency Chaplains in 2008 to provide pastoral care for first responders and to assist citizens in crisis. In 2009, Chaplain Thompson and Emergency Chaplains created a 1038 fund to assist Durham Police Officer Damon Yeomans who was critically injured in an on-duty shooting. Chaplain Thompson also provided, con provided continued emotional support to Officer Yeomans as he, rec he recovered from his injuries. Chaplain Thompson atten attends and supports numerous events such as National Night Out, the annual Peace Officers Memorial Service, and PSN Community Responses. He also created an annual Hometown, hometown Heroes Banquet to recognize first responders who make significant contributions and go above and beyond the call of duty. He is always available to public safety employees to offer a listening ear, comfort, and reassurance. Chaplain Thompson is a force of a comforting, spiritual nature who has greatly advanced the ideas of public safety in a variety of ways. Officer Mark, Mark Walker. Officer Mark Walker has been assigned to the Durham Police Department's great unit for the last eight years. During that time, he has mentored three youth who were, who were referred to outside service providers. Mark saw the need and stepped in without being asked. He has provided companionship, encouragement, discipline, and an ear to listen and a heart to care. He and his, he and his son, have been working with these three teens since they were in elementary school, and one is now a junior in high school. Mark meets with the students bi-weekly on Saturdays. They start the day with breakfast at a local McDonald's that Mark provides without question, and they discuss issues such as behaviors and strategies to help them overcome social obstacles and build confidence. After breakfast, they spend the day doing activities such as fishing, bike riding, and hiking the trails at local state parks, attending, public at, attending police athletic league events and assisting at Mark's church during Christmas to feed the hungry. Officer Walker has opened up and shared a part of his life and character with these young kids with hopes of helping them become successful young men and productive members of the Durham community. He is a shining example of the idea of the city of Durham's culture of service to others. Sergeant Stephen Vaughn. Sergeant Vaughn has been the District 1B supervisor for two years. In an ex is an, um, Sergeant Vaughn, who has been the District 1B supervisor for two years, is an ex exemplary supervisor and a strong proponent of community policing. He has developed many strategies to improve the East Durham community and the officers who, officers who work for him. One of his squad's key initiatives was improving the quality of life in an apartment complex beset with crime issues and abandoned apartments. 
He worked with numerous city and county agencies for, to form a multifaceted collaboration to improve this area. He has also developed initiati initiatives focusing on vehicle break-ins, burglaries, larcenies, high, cr high crime areas, and parking issues. Officers were able to make several arrests as a result of these initiatives. He, work, he works closely, closely with community members to identify issues and develop solutions. Sergeant Vaughn is, pro, is very proactive in his squad's professional and educational development. He set up two separate trips to the High Point Indoor Shooting Range in an effort to improve officer safety by teaching tactics for building searches and use of, use of force scenarios under daytime and nighttime conditions. He implemented a group squad run in 2014 to help his officers stay in shape, and he provides weekly training in various areas of interest to his officers. Sergeant Vaughn has demonstrated that he truly cares about the well-being and health of his officers and works to constantly improve their ability so they, they can serve and protect the citizens of Durham at the highest level possible. He is an excellent example of an officer who truly serves his community. Corporal Jessica Bree Butler and Lucas Strout. Durham Police Department employees Lucas Strout and Corporal Jessica Bree Butler have provided invaluable assistance to the Police Athletic League soccer program. They have coached more than 100 children at Club Boulevard Elementary School in the past four years. They started a year-round soccer program at Club Boulevard and have put in more than 500 volunteer hours. Lucas and Bray provide halftime and end of game drinks and snacks and put together an end of year celebration with trophies and jerseys with names and numbers for the players. They have spent approximately $2,000 of their own money for these events. Bree's mother has taken photos of the players free of charge and Bree spent $700 to replace the soccer goals. Lucas and Bray also volunteered to step in when the Pals coaches can't make it to the games. Lucas Strout and Corporal Butler have served as mentors and made differences, differences in the lives of many Durham children. They are a vital part of the Powell soccer program and have gone above and beyond to make the program at Club Boulevard a success. Officer Jacob West. District 4 officers were asked to come up with a community project for the 2014 holiday season. District 4C Officer Jacob West immediately and passionately spoke up and suggested an initiative that would demonstrate his squad's community involvement while promoting safety and enhancing the quality of life within the community. Officer West suggested that the squad put together gift bags containing hats, gloves, socks, hygiene items, and available resource referral sheets to be given to the homeless persons that the officers came in contact with during their tours of duty. Officer West took the lead in organi organizing the gathering of the items needed and putting the bags together. Most of the items were purchased from the squad members' own money, and emergency chaplains donated bottles of hand sanitizer. Approximately 40 bags were given out over the course of the holidays. The effort gave police an approximate head count of homeless in the Durham in the District 4 area and the contact with them gave officers an opportunity to gather identifying information in case of emergencies. Moreover, it allowed police to point them in the right direction to help them get off of the streets. The project was similar to an initiative Officer West and his wife did in Charlotte. Officer West is a shining example of the idea of the City of Durham's culture of service to others. Our next category is going to be the Certificate of Merit. This is presented to members for outstanding performance or devotion to duty, possibly involving personal safety. The first 
recipient is Master Officer Larry Cox. Unfortunately, he's not able to be here with us tonight, so Captain Brian's, Brian Wrights will be accepting his award. Master Officer Larry Cox is a highly trained traffic investigator and motor officer. As a traffic investigator, Master Officer Cox works on an on-call rotation to handle any serious injury accident that may happen at nights or on the weekends. During a one-week on-call rotation in September of 2014, Master Officer Cox was called in for four serious tra traffic crashes, two of which were fatalities. One of the traffic fatalities involved a toddler struck by a vehicle. Master Officer Cox handled the investigation of all these incidents and went to the hospital to let the toddler's parents know how she died. Another officer could have made the notification, but Master Officer Cox believed it was his duty as the investigating officer to personally handle this very difficult aspect of his investigation. In addition to handling these investigations, Master Officer Cox conducted 112 traffic stops, resulting in four charges of driving while impaired, 83 speeding citations, eight citations for driving while license revoked, seven citations for no operator's license, and 14 other charges. Master Officer Cox demonstrated dedication, a strong work ethic, compassion, and commitment to the city of Durham. This award is given a recognition for outstanding performance. <laughs> Master Officer Frank Gore. Master Officer Frank Gore, he joined the police department in 1986 and retired in April of 2014. As a motor officer, in addition to his motor duties, Master Officer Gore taught a wide variety of law enforcement classes on the local and state levels. He served as a mentor to many officers over the years and developed strong partnerships between the Durham Police Department and other law enforcement and community agencies. During the past year, Master Officer Gore taught the Durham Police Department's new recruits in traffic crash investigations, firearms, driver's training. In addition to those classes, Master Officer Gore also taught Radar Basic Operator School, a radar recertification course, and a Child Passenger Safety Technician course. Master Officer Gore was a valuable member to the Child Safety Training Committee and is currently a police motor instructor. He is also a Bike Safe North Carolina instructor and assessor. In 2013, Master Officer Gore was recognized as the Instructor of the Year by the North Carolina Child Passenger Safety Training Committee and as an instructor, he taught several 40-hour passenger seat, excuse me, child passenger seat installation certification classes to more than 1,000 people. Master Officer Gore is dedicated to passing on the valuable skills he attained throughout his career to others in order to improve the level, level of service to the citizens of Durham. Master Officer Gore's work ethic is beyond reproach, as is his dedication to his profession, which he truly loves. He is respected by all, and his reputation has spread across law enforcement. He is a mentor, instructor, leader, officer, and most of all, a friend to all with whom he came into contact during his exemplary career. This award is given in recognition of outstanding performance. Sergeant Glenn Price. Sergeant Glenn Price is not able to attend this evening. Captain David Addison will be accepting this award on his behalf. On January 22nd, 2013, Sergeant Glenn Price was driving on Stadium Drive en route to an off-duty job when he noticed an SUV facing east partially on the curb and grass of the westbound lane with the lights on and the engine running. Reali realizing that something was wrong, Sergeant Price stopped and approached the vehicle. He saw a man slumped in the driver's seat. The driver's window was down about two inches, all the doors were locked, and the vehicle was still in drive. The driver's eyes were rolling back in his head and he was having a very hard time breathing. Sergeant Price called for EMS and attempted to unlock the vehicle to reach the driver. He used his department-issued flashlight and broke the glass in the driver's door. He placed the vehicle in park and turned off the ignition as well as unbuckling the driver's seat belt and assisting EMS in moving the driver onto a backboard and stretcher. Medics immediately started bagging the victim. Sergeant Price and another officer drove the victim's vehicle to the hospital parking lot and transported his phone, 
keys, and other personal items to the emergency room. Sergeant Glenn Price training, quick action, and devotion to duty help save a life. This award is, re is presented in recognition of outstanding performance. <laughs> Investigator Ann Cristaldi. Investigator Ann Cristaldi has demonstrated an exceptional dedication to her job and the victims of homicides. During 2014, Investigator Cristaldi investigated seven homicides as the lead investigator, making it the second year in a row that she handled more homicides than any other investigator. In addition to the homicides, Investigator Cristaldi handled 56 death investigations, 59 missing person investigations, and this translated into an average of almost 10 additional cases per month. One example of her dedication to her work occurred on September 13, 2014. Investigator Cristaldi was on a call that night and was assisting another investigator with a case when the one they were on became a domestic homicide. Although she was not next in line in the homicide rotation, she adopted the case right away to save other investigators the trouble of having to come in after hours. During 2014, she also trained a new homicide investigator and assisted on, on almost every other homicide. This award is given in recognition for outstanding performance. Thank you. Our next recipient is Lieutenant Sherry Montgomery. She's not able to attend this evening, but Captain Wright <laughs> will be accepting the award on her behalf. During her time as a sergeant over the Traffic Services Unit, Sherry Montgomery was able to enhance the relationships with other law enforcement agencies and secure grants to provide much needed equipment for her officers. Then Sergeant Montgomery secured grants in excess of $200,000 for the Traffic Services Unit. These grants provided upgraded radar units for both the TAC officers and the motor units. The grants were also used to purchase light towers, trailers, and other vital equipment to enable the unit to better complete its mission of making the streets safe for motorists and pedestrians. As a result of purchasing the grant-funded radar units, the department was able to provide the old units and still serviceable radar units to the patrol districts. Lieutenant Montgomery was also able to repair a fractured relationship with the Governor's Highway Safety Commission, which aided in getting the grants approved. The repair is a direct result of her leadership and interpersonal communication. In this time of tight budgets for the department, Lieutenant Montgomery's efforts provided a significant contribution to the overall effectiveness of the Durham Police Department. This award is given in recognition for outstanding performance. <laughs> Master Officer DeLois West. Master Officer DeLois West is unable to attend this evening, but Captain David Addison will be accepting her award. Master Officer DeLois West spent 13 years as a homicide investigator and was known for her efforts to reach out and maintain communication with the family of homicide victims. Master Officer West spent the last year of her police career working tirelessly on unsolved homicides in addition to her usual responsibilities. She initiated and helped implement a webpage for unsolved homicides and set up an associated unsolved homicide hotline. Master Officer West interacted with various members of local media to help promote this new program, including a radio taped interview. Master Officer West worked closely with the Durham chapter of Parents of Murder Children for many years. She was a regular attendee at these meetings and has been continuously praised by the group's administrators for her assistance and support. Her dedication to these cases goes beyond solving them. Master Officer West pursues leads for the sake of closure for the family. Her dedication, compassion, and efforts went above and beyond and will always be remembered by the families of the victims. This award is given in recognition for outstanding performance. <laughs> Mark Sherman. Mark Sherman, an EIS coordinator specializing in audio video programs for the Durham Police Department, has been part of a fast growing area of support and handled a heavy workload in the past several years. Mark is one of two coordinators responsible for producing the videos from the Durham Police Department's in-car camera system. Three years ago, he produced 250 videos, but last year that increase was up to 4,000. 
He, is also, he also keeps the in-car camera systems up to date on software and works to correct any issue to ensure the cameras operate properly. In addition to this, he researched a fail-safe camera login system and installed this on 80 of our systems. Mark has been involved with the testing, the use of body cameras for the department. He created two surveys so that officers can easily share their opinions about the different systems being tested. The officers can take the surveys on their computers or their smartphones. He also created a new overtime sheet in Excel to be used by non-sworn employees to show the correct accrual of comp time. Mark Sherman handled his normal job duties and those of a second allocated EIS audiovisual position for almost a year. He came up with new ideas and provided top-notch service for a vital but often unnoticed area of the Durham Police Department. This award is given a recognition for outstanding performance. <laughs> the next award is a group award. Officer Jacob West and Richard Cohn. Officers Jacob West and Richard Cohn responded to a possible suicide in progress call in November 2014. When they arrived, they could hear a vehicle running inside a locked garage. Officer West forced his way into the house and then into the garage, where the officers were able to locate and check on the victim. The officer smelled a strong odor of vehicle exhaust and noticed that the female was unresponsive in the driver's seat. Officer West opened the car door and turned the ignition off while Officer Cohn checked for a pulse and determined that she was still breathing but unconscious. Officer West then removed her from the vehicle and carried her outside to fresh air. Officer Cohn observed bottles of muscle relaxers and alcoholic beverages in the front seat of the vehicle and removed those as well. After being in the fresh air for a while, the victim regained consciousness but was still disoriented and confused. Officer West and Cohn, despite concerns for their personal safety, were able to save the life of another through their quick action and decision making and outstanding performance. <clears throat> the next Certificate of Merit is also a group award. It's Officer Leron Thomas, Jacob West, Michael Hodrick, and Adam Osborne. On July 25th, District 4C officers Thomas, West, Hodrick, and Osborne responded to a cardiac arrest call. They arrived on scene close to the same time and found an 80-year-old female unconscious on the front porch. Officers West and Thomas began rotations of chest compressions while officers Hodrick and Osborne calmed upset family members and gathered as much patient information as possible. Officers West and Thomas continued life-standing CPR until EMS arrived on the scene and took over. Paramedics regained vital signs and were able to transport the patient to the hospital. The female was placed in intensive care at Duke University Hospital for further treatment. If not for the quick action of these officers, the female patient may not have held on long enough for paramedics to arrive. Officers West, Thomas, Osborne, and Hodrick used their training and reacted quickly under difficult circumstances to save a life. This award is presented in recognition of outstanding performance. Our last certificate of merit is also a group award. Officers Ryan Benfield, Troy Fitting, and Edwin Valerio. District 1B officers Benfield, Fitting, and Valerio responded to a cardiac arrest call on January 1, 2015. When they arrived, they found a female who was unresponsive and had no pulse. Officers immediately began CPR and continued to assist Durham County EMS by rotating in and out during the CPR. In addition, these officers also worked to ensure EMS had a clear route to exit with the patient by moving patrol cars and repositioning EMS vehicles since the res residential street was narrow and congested. The efforts by those on the scene brought a pulse back, which allowed for immediate transport of the female for continued care. Officers Benfield, Valerio, and Fitting used their training and reacted quickly under difficult circumstances to save a life. This award is presented in recognition of outstanding performance.
The next award presentation for this evening will be the, the Distinguished Service Medal. This is, this is presented to members who apprehend or cause to be apprehended a dangerous person at grave or imminent danger to themselves. Corporal Charles Fennell. Corporal Charles Fennell was at home, at home off duty on October 28, 2014 when he received a telephone call about a shooting near his home. Corporal Fennell, without hesitation, rushed from his home and with the assistance of neighbors, apprehended the, suspe the suspected shooter and held him until patrol officers arrived. After the suspect was detained, Corporal Fennell returned to the victim and performed CPR until EMS arrived. Unfortunately, despite Corporal Fennell's quick actions, the victim succumbed to his injuries. Corporal Fennell demonstrated his willingness to go above and beyond the call of duty, even while off duty, at great risk of, risk of personal injury. Although Corporal Fennell was unable to save the victim's life, his speedy and unselfish actions helped help responding officers locate the murder weapon and arrest the sus suspected murderer. Corporal Fennell's actions demonstrated his dedication to his job and to the community he serves. His action also helped bring a small beacon of hope to a grief-stricken family who lost their child in such a tragic manner. In connection with this incident, the police department will also later be awarding police medals to two residents who wish to remain anonymous. Police medals are awarded to community members who apprehend or cause to be apprehended a dangerous person at great at person at grave or imminent danger to themselves. <laughs> Officers Monte D. Sutherland, Jonathan K. Meade, and Ryan D. Whale. Officers responded to an armed robbery of a business in progress on May 23, 2014, when K-9 officer J. J. Jonathan K. Meade and Officer Monte D. Sutherland arrived at the business in the 4400 block of North Roxborough Street, they heard a door close and realized someone was hiding inside. The officers entered the business and discovered two victims with their wrists and ankles duct taped. The officers freed the victims and continued to search the business. The officers found three armed suspects hiding inside a bathroom and challenged them to come out with their hands over their heads. Canine officer Ryan D. Will arrived on scene and assisted the officers in apprehending and handcuffing the three suspects. Officer Meade, Will, and Sutherland reacted quickly and professionally when faced with, da with a dangerous situation. They put their personal safety at risk and were able to rescue the victims who were unharmed they also were able to arrest three suspects, recover all the stolen property, and seize three handguns. <laughs> Our next award would be for the Civilian of the Year. The Durham Police Department Civilian Employee of the Year Medal is presented by the department to any non-sworn employee of the department for exceptional performance throughout the year. Christina Moody. Durham Police, Durham Police Department EIS Supervisor Christina Moody joined the Durham Police Department in 2000 and has been an invaluable employee. She is knowledgeable and always available to answer questions and resolve issues. If she doesn't have an immediate solution, she will find one. She takes a very active role in making sure that she and her unit provide excellent service to the department. She created and maintains a website with valuable information to make it easier for officers to do their jobs. The website is basically a one-stop shop for officers to find forms, answers to questions, and, and links to helpful websites. During the past year, Chris played a large part and the behind the scenes preparation and testing of the start of the Durham of the department's body worn camera pilot program. She is currently overseeing all of the staging and coordination with te technology solutions to assure that our department has a smooth transaction to the city's new telephone system. In the middle of 2014, 
Chris lost two of her four technology staff members to retirement in a two-month span. During the time, her unit was understaffed, and even later, as she trained her new personnel, she displayed a high level of dedication to the department by putting in many extra unpaid hours on, on the job to assure that all of her unit's projects and programs stay on track. Christina Moody's work ethic and the great attitude she brings to the job every day make her a true asset to the Durham Police Department. By demonstrating her exceptional devotion to duty, Chris Moody has been selected as the Durham Police Department's 2015 Civilian of the Year. The next award is our Durham Police Department Officer of the Year. The Durham Police Department Officer of the Year Medal is prevented, presented by the department for an outstanding, to an outstanding officer for performance throughout the year, Sergeant Dale Gunter. Sergeant Gunter joined the Durham Police Department in 1994 and has spent the last 20 plus years serving the city and community with an unrivaled level of devotion. As Heat 2 Supervisor, Sergeant Gunter takes every available opportunity to spend time in the community speaking with residents, corresponding with PAC 2 members, and handing out junior police stickers to the kids. He is an interactive member of 28 neighborhood listservs, responding to dozens of questions and concerns on a daily basis. Whenever he's not busy patrolling the streets with his team, you can find Sergeant Gunter walking through neighborhoods on foot, interacting with citizens, and even taking a moment to shoot hoops or play in the snow with local children. Each year he participates in community events which are too numerous to mention. Recently, a PAC-2 member was hospitalized with a serious health condition. Sergeant Gunter took time out of his schedule to visit him in the hospital and used his personal finances to install a new handrail for the gentleman's front doorsteps. Operationally, Sergeant Gunter is involved in several areas. He teaches in the Recruit Academy and provides in-service training in firearms, CPR, tracks, and mobile field force preparations. Sergeant Gunter institute, instituted and maintains the life-saving AED registry program throughout the department and there are now 30 AED units available. Sergeant Gunter has won numerous awards over the years for his work. By demonstrating his exceptional devotion to duty and to the safety and care of the Durham citizens, Sergeant Dale Gunter has been selected as the Durham Police Department's 2015 Officer of the Year. Our last category of awards is the Medal of Valor. The Medal of Valor is the highest recognition given by the department. Any member may be nominated for the award. The Medal of Valor may be granted to members who distinguish themselves by gallantry and bravery in an attempt to preserve life or property at a clear risk of personal safety. The act must be so conspicuous that it clearly distinguishes the member as the one who acted far beyond the call of duty. Master Officer J.J. McDonough. In 2004, Master Officer John McDonough was on patrol in a high crime area in District 2 responding to complaints of drug activity. Master Officer McDonough observed three individuals selling narcotics and approached the subjects when one fled on foot. Master Officer McDonough gave chase and followed the suspect into the wood line where Master Officer McDonough was ambushed. The suspect was hiding and fired a shot from extremely close range at Master Officer McDonough. The round passed within inches of Officer McDonough's face causing powder burns. The round that was fired skimmed his vest, striking his holster, and lodged into his weapon. Master Officer McDonough's preparedness, training, and courageous actions assisted in his ability to survive this confrontation. His dedication to law enforcement and devotion to duty led him to risk his life in service to the citizens of Durham and his fellow officers. Master Officer McDonough is awarded the Medal of Valor. Officer Jacob West. On Thursday, December 25th, 
2014, at approximately 10 p.m., Officer Jacob West was working on a report in his marked patrol, quarter, patrol car at the corner of Lakeland Street and Truman Street. At some point, Officer West noticed two males approaching his car from the rear. Officer West exited his vehicle to speak with the men, and one of the males removed a gun from his waistband and, without provocation, opened fire on Officer West. Officer West immediately returned fire and dove for cover behind a set of stairs at an abandoned apartment building on Lakeland Street. This action caused Officer West to, st to sustain a minor injury to his wrist. Ignoring his wrist injury, Officer West composed himself and prepared to further engage the two men. Officer West rose from the stairs and saw the two males running away down a path on Lakeland Street. This event was particularly chilling because this incident happened only two days after the fatal ambush of two New York police officers in which a lone gunman opened fire on the unsuspecting officers while they were seated in their patrol vehicle. Officer West's actions on that evening were truly a testament to his bravery and his unwavering willingness to sacrifice his safety in order to attempt to apprehend these men and stop them from causing any further harm. He demonstrated steadfast courage in the face of imminent danger. For this, Officer West is awarded the Medal of Valor. That ends our last award. If you all could please put your hands together one more time to applaud our recipients. Thank you. I now ask that Chaplain Phil Wiggins to come to the podium to give the benediction. Please join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful that these men and women have been honored this evening because of their dedication and commitment to do more than is required or expected. Father, help us to be able to say, whatsoever we do, we do it heartily as to the Lord, not unto men. Protect us from seeking praise of men more than the praise of God. Be with those that have been awarded this award tonight. Watch over them and guide and direct them in all that they do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In closing, I would like to thank the Durham Police Department Awards Committee who've spent many hours behind the scenes in preparation for this event. Specifically, Assistant Chief Winslow Forbes, Lieutenant Jermaine Jackson, Kim Walker, and Cami Michael. I would also like to thank Assistant Chief Jesse Burwell, the Durham Police Department Honor Guard, our Citizens on Patrol, the City of Durham Public Affairs Office, to include Durham Television Network, Master Officer Brandon Parrott and David Reynolds, as well as the City of Durham General Services. Finally, the Durham Police Department thanks all of the families of our employees and the citizens for your support. Congratulations to our recipients. That concludes our program. Please join us for refreshments in the lobby. Thank you so much.